going on inside of that head of yours? What about Pixar's latest film, Inside Out? We've reached deep in the back of the mind of Pixar's latest blockbuster and pulled out 107 facts that you should know about Inside Out. Number 1. Inside Out is based on an idea director Pete Docter had, exploring thoughts and emotions in the mind. He saw little quirky things that all people do, like getting a song stuck in their heads or giggling uncontrollably, and thought, I want to take a look at that and explain that. John Lasseter described the film early on as very, very clever and truly unlike anything you've ever seen, yet it explained things you've seen. Number 2. So far, reception for the film has been overwhelmingly positive. It's been praised for being smart and stunningly original. Number 3. The film is set in the mind of an 11-year-old girl named Riley Anderson, who is voiced by 16-year-old Caitlin Diaz. Number 4. Riley is guided by her personified emotions, joy, fear, anger, disgust, and sadness, who live in the control center in her mind, dubbed Headquarters. Number 5. Joy, Riley's main and most important emotion, is played by Amy Poehler. As long as Riley is happy, so is Joy. Number 6. Fear is played by Bill Hader, Anger is Louis Black, Disgust is played by Mindy Kaling, and Sadness is Phyllis Smith. Forget Headquarters, I've seen some of these familiar faces around The Office. Number 7. Speaking of The Office, there's another show having a mini reunion. Rashida Jones is the voice of Cool Girls Emotions, which means that Parks and Recreation's best besties, Leslie and Ann, are in the same movie. Number 8. When things don't go according to plan, Anger has a tendency to literally explode with flames bursting from his head. Doesn't sound like someone I'd want to stand next to. Unless it's cold outside. Number 9. Fear's main job is to protect Riley. He looks out for potential disasters and evaluates possible dangers. Number 10. According to her description, disgust keeps Riley from being poisoned, both physically and socially. Where was she when I had that bad seafood the other night? Number 11. Sadly, none of Riley's other emotions quite understand what Sadness's role is at headquarters. Joy's even checked around for the answer. Number 12. Some other locations in Riley's head include Imagination Land, Dream Productions, and long-term memory, which I'm actually lacking. Number 13. Inside Out's world premiere took place on May 18th, 2015 at the 68th Cannes Film Festival. Its wide theatrical release is set for June 19th, 2015. Number 14. I gotta say, this film is quite the tearjerker and even its stars aren't immune. When the story was pitched to Mindy Kaling, she cried. Then she handed its creators their slogan by saying, I think it's great that you guys are making a film that shows that it's difficult to grow up and it's okay to be sad about it. According to Doctor, they were like, quick, write that down. And they showed me the story and I started weeping. <laughs> Number 15. Neuroscientists were consulted to help make the film setting of an 11-year-old girl's brain believable. The team also interviewed child psychologists and psychiatrists, spent months designing and redesigning set elements, and even swapped out a key character. Number 16. The film's creators also looked to their daughters and their friends for inspiration. According to Doctor, people think we make this stuff up. Most of it is real life. Number 17. In particular, Pete Doctor's daughter, Ellie, was a driving force. At the age of nine, she voiced Ellie in the film Up. As she got older, Doctor noticed that she was a lot less energetic and reserved. He remembers thinking, what's going on in her head? Number 18. The film's soundtrack was composed by Michael Giacchino, and it released on June 16th, 2015. Number 19. This is Michael Giacchino's fifth collaboration with Pixar. He previously worked on The Incredibles, Ratatouille, Up, and Cars 2. Number 20. Originally from the Midwest, Minnesota to be more exact, Riley and her family relocate to San Francisco for her father's new job, which is where the film takes place. Number 21. Analysts have predicted that the film will make $250 million on domestic ticket sales alone. That's the power of Pixar, baby. Number 22. The film was first announced at Disney's D23 Expo in 2011. It was presented with the working title of The Untitled Pixar Movie That Takes You Inside the Mind. That's a mouthful. Number 23. The film's real title was officially announced via Pixar's Twitter on April 17th, 2013. Number 24. Inside Out is the second Pixar film to have a female protagonist, the first being brave. Number 25. Inside Out's teaser trailer features snippets from every Pixar movie prior, except for Toy Story 2 and Cars 2. Number 26. Sometimes our favorite part of a Pixar movie is the preceding short film. Inside Out's short is titled Lava and is the love story between 
two volcanoes? It's described as a musical love story taking place over millions of years that is inspired by the isolated beauty of tropical islands and the explosive allure of ocean volcanoes. Number 27. The volcanoes in the short are named Uka and Lely, a pun on ukulele. Number 28. In France, the movie is titled Vice Versa. In Japan, it's Insido Hedo. I'm sure you can guess what that translates to, but just in case, it's inside head. Number 29. The song that plays during the film's teaser trailer is Sweet Emotion by Aerosmith, one of my all-time favorites. The song from the film's second trailer is More Than a Feeling by Boston, one of my least favorites. Number 30. The newspaper Anger Reads is called The Mind Reader. Number 31. A fun detail that is in the US version of the film's trailer is Riley's dad's emotions are watching ice hockey. In the UK trailer, they're watching a soccer match, or should we say football? Number 32. Coincidentally, or maybe not, director Pete Docter was an animator on Epcot's former attraction, Cranium Command. The theater presentation also explored the inside of a person's head and personified different parts of the human body, such as the left and right brain. Number 33. Pete Docter had the most fun bringing anger to life in the film. He said it's likely because Lewis Black was so great for the role. Number 34. Each emotion's design was based on a shape. Joy is a star. Sadness is a teardrop. Fear is a raw nerve. Nerve. Anger is a fire brick, and disgust is a broccoli. Number 35. Despite what you might think after hearing that and watching the film, Pete Doctor loves broccoli. Eat your greens, kids. Number 36. Paula Poundstone voices Forgetter Paula, and Bobby Moynihan voices Forgetter Bobby. Wonder where they got their characters' names from. Number 37. Similar to that, Frank Oz and Dave Goals play subconscious guard Frank and subconscious guard Dave. Fun thing to note is that Frank Oz and Dave Goals are both Muppeteers. Number 38. Doctor was in inspired to pursue a career in filmmaking through Dumbo, Cinderella, Ichabod Crane, classic Disney features, and the Warner Brothers shorts. Number 39. Inside Out is the fourth Pixar film with a PG rating, following in the footsteps of The Incredibles, Up, and Brave. It received the rating on the basis of mild thematic elements and some action. Number 40. Inside Out is the first Pixar film to have as many sneak peeks as it does. I guess the studio is just as excited for its release as we are. Number 41. The Chinese food boxes that Riley and her family eat out of have made appearances in several other Pixar films, most notably A Bug's Life. Number 42. In the film, Riley's hockey rink is located in real life where the Walt Disney Family Museum stands in San Francisco. Number 43. According to Pete Docter, the most difficult challenge when directing this film was creating a completely new and made up world. It wasn't something they could go out and find a reference for in real life, like a toy store or a university or even Scotland. Number 44. Some of the memory or Orbs seen in the film contain images from Up's famous married life sequence. Number 45. A playground is seen in Riley's memory orb that is identical to the one from Sunnyside Daycare in Toy Story 3. The only difference is the slide, which is straight instead of coiled. Sounds like Riley does have something to be sad about. We all know coiled slides are way more fun. Number 46. Pete Doctor has said that in the film, moving is a metaphor for growing up. If that's the case, I never want to move. Number 47. Inside Out took five years to complete. Doctor first pitched the idea to John Laster in June of 2009. Number 48. Do you remember those adorable birds from Pixar's short, For the Birds? Of course you do. Well, during Riley's family trip to San Francisco, guess who you can spot on a telephone wire? The birds. Hitchcock would be mighty proud. Number 49. We know background characters aren't all that important, but you may want to keep an eye on them during Inside Out. One of Riley's classmates is wearing a camo pattern composed of Toy Story characters. Number 50, we're pretty much halfway. Another one of her classmates wears a shirt with the same skull motif that's seen on Sid's shirt in Toy Story and his brief cameo in Toy Story 3. Number 51, when asked about his hopes that Inside Out will help kids and adults better understand emotions, Pete Docter stated that being aware of how people think and interact gives you a deeper understanding of life. Number 52, in early story outlines, Riley was going to be transported into her mind. There, she would meet her emotions and travel alongside them. Number 53. So we mentioned a few background characters, but have you been paying attention to background cars? Some of the ones in Inside Out are actually reused models from Cars 2. Number 54. Also, if you're super perceptive, you'll notice that some background cars have bumper stickers from the movie Cars. Number 55. Riley Anderson's last name comes from Pixar employee Darla K. Anderson and Toy Story 3 character Bonnie Anderson. 
Number 56. Joy is a huge fan of Rainbow Unicorn from Dream Productions and loved her performance in Fairy Dream Adventure Part 7. Now there's a movie I really want to see made. Number 57. Rainbow Unicorn is the second unicorn character in Pixar's films. The first one, Buttercup from Toy Story 3. So who's your favorite? I mean, Rainbow Unicorn has my mom's hair circa the 1980s, but Buttercup's nostrils are hearts. Come on! Does that make everything smell like love? Number 58. The globe in Riley's classroom is identical to the one that appeared in Andy's room in all three Toy Story films. Number 59. Riley's dad works at a company called Brang. What does that mean? Well, nothing. Brang is a nonsense word that creators came up with thinking it sounded like it could be a startup in the San Francisco scene. Number 60. There is a box in Imagination Land that features a clownfish in the title, Find Me a clear allusion to Finding Nemo. Number 62, keep your eyes peeled. A sign on one of the parking meters in San Francisco humorously reads, quarters and dollar coins or barter during Burning Man. Number 63, Inside Out is part of a push by Disney and Pixar to make films with more diverse characters. John Lasseter has said, it's very important to us to have female and ethnic characters. Number 64, Inside Out has been more editing dependent than almost any other film doctor has worked on, largely because it's an ensemble comedy. According to him, the difference between something being funny or not is sometimes two frames. For those of you who don't know, two frames is only a twelfth of a second. Talk about a split second. Number 65. Fun fact, Pixar's inner team of creative leaders is called the Brain Trust. I wonder if they knew they'd be working on a film set inside the brain when they coined the term. Number 66. Inside Out is Pixar's 15th film. It's also predicted to become their 15th consecutive blockbuster. Not too shabby, Pixar. Not too shabby. Number 67. Director Pete Docter joined Pixar back in 1994, becoming its third animator. Number 68. John Lasseter has said that Inside Out was one of the most difficult films films the studio has ever made. The studio knew from the first time the idea was pitched that it had the potential to be something special. At the same time, they knew it would be really hard. Number 69. The creators aim for the film to make basic scientific sense. For example, it's thought by scientists that short-term memories are converted to long-term ones during sleep. So when Riley goes to sleep, her memories traverse through shoots and ramps to represent this. Number 70. We all know the film follows joy and sadness as they navigate through Riley's psyche. But did you know that they weren't the original? original pair picked. For a while, the creators thought that joy and fear would be the lost emotions because it seemed like the funniest choice. Number 71. Sadness scooted into the picture when Doctor went for a Sunday stroll and spiraled into a negative train of thought. He was certain he was going to get fired. He was going to miss his friends, which he had happy, angry, and sad times with. Doctor came to the realization that Joy needed to understand that it's okay for sadness to be included at the controls once in a while. Number 72. Are you a fan of the Red Hot Chili Peppers? Then take special note of mind worker cop Jake because he's voiced by the band's bassist, Flea. Number 73. The memory orbs in the film were inspired by George Rhodes' kinetic ball sculptures. Number 74. Based on research, creators originally thought they should work up to having 27 emotions in the film. As they wrote the film, though, they realized it was way too complicated. Number 75. The film's creators note that scientists point out that they're missing surprise, but they found the emotion too similar to their portrayal of fear. They also dabbled with adding in pride, but found their final choices to be a good blend. Number 76. For the mind's designs, creators tried to think of what an 11-year-old girl would be interested in without moving into the overly cute or cliché. Number 77. Producer Jonas Rivera likes to joke that it looks like an Apple store meets It's a Small World. Number 78. Director Pete Docter voices Riley's dad's anger and co-director Ronnie Del Carmen provided some additional voices gotta keep it in the fam. Number 79. One of the film's writers, Josh Cooley, also lent his voice to the film. He plays Jangles the Clown. Number 80. Phyllis Smith was chosen to play Sadness after producer Jonas Rivera saw her performance in the lunch scene of Bad Teacher. He called up Pete Docter and said, I think we found our sadness. Number 81. Director Pete Docter has been nominated for six Oscars, one of which he won for Up. Here's to hoping that Inside Out will help him nab a second and maybe even a third. Number 82. The film the film's Blu-ray release will include a short set in the same world titled Riley's First Date. It'll be directed by Josh Cooley, the film's head of story. Number 83. In an attempt to better represent what emotions would look like, animators tried to make the characters appear as though they were composed of energy and moving particles. 
If you pay attention, when the emotions move, you'll see them release tiny particles of color. Number 84. The emotions can use idea bulbs to help give Riley new ideas. Number 85. Joy was the first emotion conjured up after Riley's birth. She was followed closely by sadness. Number 86. As they were researching, creators were told by psychologists that no one on Earth is more emotionally attuned to other people than a girl between the ages of 12 and 16, which helped affirm that they were exploring the right territory. Number 87. Bing Bong, Riley's imaginary friend, is a mix between an elephant, a cat, and cotton candy. He can also squeal like a dolphin. Number 88. Why is Bing Bong composed of cotton candy, you might ask? Let's see what Pete Doctor had to say because I like cotton candy. Number 89. Judging from the fact that he thinks danger spells shortcut, Bing Bong is illiterate. Number 90. Jangles the Clown is one of Riley's darkest fears. After being traumatized by his real-life counterpart at her third birthday party, she kept a version of him in subconscious. Number 91. When the first clips of Inside Out were shown at the 2013 D23 Expo, Disgust looked a little different. She wore a purple dress instead of green, had longer hair, and lacked her now notably long eyelashes. Number 92. Even prior to this, some of the film's earliest concept art had Disgust as a male character. Number 90. Three, Pete Doctor has said that the emotions genders were intuitively chosen. Anger felt very masculine to him while sadness felt a little more feminine. Disgust was driven by how right Mindy Kaling was for the role. Number 94. Disgust's belt buckle is shaped like a D. I wonder what that stands for. Number 95. On top of voice acting, Bill Hader helped out with the film's story. According to Jonas Rivera, he'd come up and stay for a week and pitch in story ideas. Number 96. Riley is the first ever Pixar character to also be a location. Now that's something to put on your resume. Number 97. Pete Doctor has said the film story was one of the most challenging he'd ever had to put together because of the dual intertwining plot simultaneously following The Emotions and Riley. Number 98, on to the final 10. The film's animation style took inspiration from classic cartoons and creators like Chuck Jones, Tex Avery, Milt Call, and John Sibley. They added more stretching and exaggerated movements than usual for Pixar. Number 99, Riley is the fourth Pixar character to have her butt shown. The first three, Harris, Hubert, and Hamish from Brave. Number 100. If you have incredible hearing, you may pick up on the fact that Baby Riley's yells after she refuses her broccoli are a reused recording of Boo shouting in Monsters Incorporated. Number 101. Creators actually came up with a number of imaginary friends, but Bing Bong was the only one to make the final cut. The others were just not useful enough to the story. Number 102. Though Riley's emotions are mixed in gender, her father's emotions are all male and her mother's emotions are all female. This was done for quick readability. Doctor acknowledges that it's a little phony, but hopefully people don't mind. Number 103. If you pay close attention to the scene where Riley is building a castle of cards, certain ones have R's on them and depict Riley. Riley's mom can be seen on the queen cards, and her dad can be seen on the king cards. Now that's a custom card set I'd like to have but with my face instead. Number 104. As mentioned earlier, Riley's lead emotion is joy. Her father's is anger and her mother's is sadness. Number 105. The film's art book reveals that joy was originally going to be able to appear in the real world rather than just the mind world. Also, Riley entering depression was going to be a larger part of the story. Number 106. For each second of the film, 24 images of over 2 million pixels each are rendered. It has a running time of 102 minutes. You do the math. Finishing up the list with number 100. 107, approximately 177,096 storyboards were drawn for the film. Of those, 127,781 were delivered to editorial. Thank you so much for watching 107 Inside Out Facts. Head over to StashRiot.com to enter the Inside Out sweepstakes for the chance to win some plush and vinyl. Stash Riot always has sweepstakes going on, so head over to StashRiot.com to check them out. Please like this video and share the knowledge with your friends. This is Tuned Up on Cartoon Hangover.